Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I am going to do an update on my carnivorous plants. I hold in front of you here one of my favorite carnivorous plants, which is called a cobra lily uh, or Darlingtonia californica. So, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, the care and culture of these beauties here, as well as give you a few updates on other things that are happening with my carnivorous plants. A lot of things this month are going to bloom for me. So I will show you some of the blooms and buds that are happening with some of my carnivorous plants. Um, being it's in the greenhouse, it's probably going to be a couple months ahead of most people's blooms, but it'll give you an idea of what to expect in your carnivorous plants over the next month. Alright, the first stop in our carnivorous plant update is the cobra lilies. So these guys are cool carnivorous plant. They are temperate so they do need a winter dormancy. I plant them in white containers to reflect the light back. This one is in a sour cream container because it was the biggest white container I could find at the time of transplanting. The idea is the white container keeps the roots cool while they are in the summer sun. If the roots were to get warm these plants will just perish unfortunately. Awesome plant though. The next plant in our update is my patch of Venus flytraps. This year I'm going to try to get some seed from them, so I'm going to let them flower. The flower spikes are getting quite large now. I would imagine another couple weeks and they will be actually open. I'm not sure how many plants I have, quite a few. The the pitcher or the um, trap production now is in full swing. They came out of dormancy about a month ago. And I feed them freeze dried bloodworms while they're in the greenhouse just to make sure it keeps their energy levels up. This is another temperate carnivorous plant, so it does need a winter dormancy. I allow them to be outside with the cobra lilies and the serencidia. And they are good down till minus 5 to minus 10. I try not to ever let them be out past minus 5 though. They have had snow on them and the pot of water does freeze solid. These are a few of my Serencinia that are still in the greenhouse. Everything that's in the greenhouse here is in flower or has been pollinated. If you didn't see the video on pollinating Serencinia flowers, please check that out in the description below. These flowers here the pollination seems to be successful. They have dropped all their petals and I can see the uh, seed, the ovaries back here where the seed is starting to form. There's a few different flowers out. This one here it was a nice surprise this year. It is a Serencinia pribria. So I'm using that to cross pollinate some of the other Serencinia flowers that are above it and vice versa. There's three other kinds of Serencidia outside now. The weather's warm enough here that they can be outside. And they do better with the brighter light. Even though it's a greenhouse, they, um, they grow quite pale when they're not in full sunlight. But yeah, that is my Serencidia flower patch. Beautiful flowers. Very bizarre. This is a Drosera rotundifolia. It has sent up a flower spike this year. So that'll be um, interesting. We'll get some rotundifolia seeds. There's two plants in here. Both are um, well out of dormancy, producing sticky goo, and have got their 10th or 12th leaf on already. These are a couple of pinguicula that are in bloom and are just about to bloom. So there is a patch there. They've had several flowers on this year already. And this one here is actually an unknown ping, so I'll be excited to see what this um, bloom looks like so that we can identify this. I'm not going to be um, that good at identifying pinguicula flowers, but I will do an update when this guy flowers and maybe you guys out there can help me identify it. Here are a few more different kinds of pings that I got this year. 
they've all done really well. They started as tiny little ones like this guy here and most of them have developed into healthy young plants. A lot of them have actually got some side shoots coming on now and will be more than one healthy new plant so that's kind of cool. These guys are now producing their carnivorous leaves that just started a few leaves ago so they have some sticky dew on them. You can see that one has trapped the bug right in there. Pinguicula is really um, their trapping abilities are are limited so their um, main food supply is fungus gnats here in the greenhouse but I'm really enjoying them they're growing quite quickly for me they get um, water in the bottom of the tray and I just let the water evaporate out until it is dry and then a couple days later I'll rewater them again they're in quite a bright spot they do get some direct sun up until probably noon these are some Drosera seedlings that I have. There's a few different kinds in there. Uh, there's Drosera intermedia. There's Drosera rotundifolia. There is Drosera regia. And there is Drosera uh, filiformis. And all these little guys here. So they're doing quite well. I did an update on the king sundews when they first germinated. I don't know if you can see in the container there, but they have actually got three or four carnivorous leaves now. If you haven't seen that king sundew germination video, I'll include a link to that as well in this video. But yeah, they're doing quite well. These are a few of my Drosera capensis. I have got um, numerous plants of this species. I noticed that my capensis are putting on their first flower buds of the year right there. And this guy has a flower bud right there. So these are very large plants. Um, the span on them is probably 16 inches, I would say eight inches per leaf in all directions. They are very good at trapping and killing insects in here. The capensis are able to trap housefly size um, prey. They are not temperate, just like the pinguiculas behind them. They stay in the greenhouse when the weather gets cold. There's no dormancy on them. Let's slide this back. This is some seedling capensis. Now it's actually hundreds and hundreds of seedlings in there. That little carpet is just packed. I can't even um, begin to count how many there is. What you're seeing is mainly the bigger ones, but underneath the bigger ones is just a carpet of little ones as well. So I will have capensis everywhere pretty soon. I still collect the seeds from the capensis, but they may just be seeds to give away to friends. Okay, I will leave the tripod behind and take you on a tour of the Nepenthes. This is Nepenthes Miranda. It's starting to produce quite big pictures now. This picture has got to be at least a foot, maybe more, in length, and they're all over the plant. Here's another one. There's lots of pictures starting. There's pictures up here as well. So the key with Nepenthes is these are highland species and I never let them dry out. They get quite good sun. You can see the leaves are um, turning a nice red color. This is a Nepenthes ventrata. It's one of my newer pitcher plants. Uh, it's also highland. They did have some bigger pictures on them but I'm going to assume that this was actually a bunch of Nepenthe ventrata cuttings and they're now establishing their roots a little bit better. The pictures that are coming out are tiny in comparison. Um, that one might be a bigger one there that's going to start. But it's really growing, it's really taking off up there. And there is probably 12 basil shoots coming out there, so this is going to be a monstrous plant. It's got numerous gro growth points. 
and tons of pictures starting to come out on it. So I know it's a really robust grower. I'm looking forward to some big evasive Ventrata pictures coming up on it. Alright, this Nepenthes here. It is my Spectabile. I actually had to hang it on a lower bench. It was just getting too tall. I it always is a great picture producer, produces lots of upper pictures. It's um, gone into the vining stage. It's three and a half feet tall, three feet tall. But I do notice that down in here, it is starting a new shoot as well. And you can see some little tiny pictures starting on it right there. So that will be nice. I'll have a secondary shoot coming up from my Spectabili. Beautiful pictures, I love the pattern on them. And we're going to swing you way up here to a couple picture plants that are hanging up on the roof here. Now this one here is the Sanguia. Uh, it had lots of pictures, but it actually um, stopped picturing for the winter time and just uh, maintained what it had. I recently cut them all off because they were looking kind of ratty and now it's starting to produce again. It's got a few up in the pot starting to grow as well. This plant I got just as a seedling it's um, 50 times bigger than it was before. The pictures on it were uh, the size of they were maybe a centimeter. And this one here is a Ventricosa it's got some good sized pictures on it. Every leaf has a picture. This guy I find it does best in almost direct sunlight. It's got its biggest picture so far, which is that big. And it got it in the winter time, so that's kind of impressive. And I see that it's actually growing another bigger picture up there as well. So it is just absolutely loaded in pictures. There's no spot where there isn't pictures for a little plant. I bet it has 15 pictures on it. And yeah, that is a few of my Nepenthes. Anyways guys, I will leave you with one final look of my Cobra Lilies there behind, or in front of the patch of Venus flytraps. I hope you enjoyed this carnivorous plant update. And if you want to see more updates like this, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.